Today's Bible study comes from the book of John, chapter 12, and it is verses 20 through 36. And it reads as follows. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with the request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in the world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there, was there and heard it, said, it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, excuse me, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw down all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. The crowd spoke up. We have heard from the law that the Messiah will remain forever. So how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? When Jesus told them, you're going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. Whoever walks in the dark does not know where they are going. Believe in the light while you have the light, so that you may become children of the light. When he had finished speaking, Jesus left and hid himself from them. Amen. So, it's speaking about the hour to come. Now, there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Um, now, remember, these Greeks... Uh, may have been those that had been converted, um, but it didn't say specifically who they, what Greeks they were. It just says that they believed they were God fears, and they came to seek Jesus. So they were seeking Christ, and they had to be looking for something when they when they get there. So they say, "Sir, we wish to see Jesus." And this was because they had heard about Jesus and the things that he had done, and they wanted to see him. Um, excuse me for yawning. They knew of his reputation. He was a teacher. He had healed. He had been speaking and teaching, and they wanted to see him. And the hour has come. Now, this was at least twice before Jesus said his time was not ready. And you can see it in John 2 and 4 and 7 and 6. And he he took this seeking interest of Gentiles. That, that now the hour has come that the Son should be glorified. He's talking about, it's your time now that I should be glorified and lifted up. And this was a time in the gospel where they were to see that Jesus was the Messiah, the world's Savior. And... As we look at this, the 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 hour had not yet come, had delivered him from violence before. You know, he, he took off in this situation. Now that the hour has come, it was time for Jesus to take his final sacrifice. This was a time when Jesus would let you put your hands on him and let you take him in because he knew what was supposed to happen. And excuse me again for yawning. The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. And this wasn't for Jesus to be glorified in the eyes of us. 
This was just his entry, his his victory entry. And the glorify where he was pointing to was being glorified on the cross. Um because this was the, a humiliating thing, but but Jesus saw the cross as a place of being glorified, and it was a glorifying spot. The the Messiah came down and sacrificed for the world. We needed his blood, but all the answers of the prophets, all the statements of the prophets, all the Lord's words, everything were now coming to the completion part. So, Jesus is ready. Yeah. The hour is coming, stays, but there is no going back from this time. And Jesus was doing his Father's will. So if you look at verses 24 through 26, it says, Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, that's Jesus telling you, hey, this seed can't become more than what it is unless it dies. It's just like when you plant a watermelon seed, my favorite fruit. The seed can't become a watermelon until the seed is gone and it flourishes into the whole fruit. So Jesus is telling them, what you need me to be and what I am going to be and what my father sent me to be is something that you will have to see when I die. So I will have to be buried in death. And the glorification will come from the fruit of my death. Just like I was saying with the watermelon seed, just like a flower. People don't buy seeds and say, oh, I can't wait for the seed. They buy the seed to say, I can't wait for the flower to grow. So it will be more than what I planted. It will be more beautiful than what it was given to. So Jesus is letting them know this. And then he says, he who loves his, his life will lose it. And who hates his life in this world will keep it. Hmm. Now, this, some people might say, well, that seems crazy, or what's wrong with that? It says, he who loves his life will lose it. Um, what it's really saying, and I'll make it short, give up this worldly life. Because if you love this life, it's going to be gone once you did. But, if you hate the life that you have that does not have God in it. And that means if you stay in the life of this world, if you hate that life and you you want to get rid of it, you will keep your life, but it will not be this physical life. You will die, but there will be an eternal life for you. Because that means you started doing things that God wants you to do. The world is enmity against the Lord. So don't do the world's ways, do God's ways. And, and he didn't say hate your life. He's just saying hate the ways of the world. This world is not the life we're supposed to be concentrating on. We're supposed to be concentrating on the way God wants us to be, being obedient and faithful. That's our job. And you can look at Hebrews 11, 13 through 16. Um, I won't read that, but you can look it up. Um, your priority should always be on God. If you look at Jesus as your shining example, he was always about his father's will. He was not worried about this life. He knew he had work to do here, but it was to glorify his father because he knew that there was glory after this life. He knew that he, what he was here for. He knew he was a sacrifice. And he came to teach and share and love and be compassionate and patient and kind. And to have his blood shed. But that's because the victory and planting this seed here and after his death was opening up a fruit of eternal life and salvation for all of us. So, 
he says, if anyone serves me, let them follow me. In order to serve Jesus, it means you have to do things the way that he would have us to them. That's why you open your book up and read the word so you know. If you want Christ in your life, you have to realize that you are a servant. We are the servant. We are not the master. And in order to know how to serve him, you have to read your Bible. You have to take the time to open it up and see what the Lord has in store for you. And you have great gifts and great talents and abilities that the Lord already placed in you if you just call upon him and ask him to open them up to you. And then he goes, where I am there, my servant will be also. Jesus is telling you, his servant wants to be where he is. His servant wants to be with him. And we all should want to be with him. This isn't something that he came down here and started punching people in the head and said, follow me, follow me, follow me. Jesus' message came through with love. Came through with love and his own suffering. Jesus gives you a choice. People, when they hear where I am, it's talking about not going to just the place where Jesus is. We want to be there one day, but it's talking about we want to be where he is in this physical world, in his faith. How Jesus was is how we want to be. We want to be there. We, we strive to get closer to God. And to get closer to God, we need to be more Christ-like. So where he is is where we want to be. We want to be like Christ. Um, if you look at John 17 and 24, it says, Father, I desire that they also, whom you gave me, may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. So, it is, we want to be in God's view like he is. We want to do the things that please God like he does. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. This is a promise. This is a promise. If you serve me, my father will honor you. And to receive that honor... the Lord recognizes you, so you get a reward and recognition. Now, my soul is troubled that, what I, shall I say? Father, save me from the hour, but for this purpose, I came to this hour, Father. Glory, glorify your name. Now, gee, my soul is troubled. Now, Jesus was troubled. He, he was man, and he knew that this cross was going to be hard. There was going to be some pain. Um, and although John doesn't take us into detail in the prayer, we knew that it was going to be painful. And Jesus is, he prayed about it. If you look at John 12, 27 and 28, it says, now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for the purpose but for the purpose, I came to this hour. And he came to this hour to glorify God's name. And then God was saying to him, I have both glorified you and will glorify again. This wasn't something Jesus just wanted to do. He hadn't done nothing wrong, but he was being obedient. He was doing what he was told to do. And what shall I say, Father, save me from this hour? And Jesus knew what time this was. And there was no escape out of this situation. Because Jesus says, for this purpose, I came to this hour. He came to the cross. And this cross was not 
something that should have been received from or received by him for a life that he led. Faultless love, compassion, sharing. Jesus' ministry was the best, is the best. But man, man had to have an atonement. So we couldn't get any better gift than this. Father, glorify your name. Even with the cross coming up on him, even with the pain and beating Jesus was going to take and receive, he still gave God the glory. And I, then I said, as I said, then a voice came from heaven. And this was the third time the Lord had spoke out in the divine testimony of Jesus, talking about, that is my son. He knew who he was, and he glorified him, and will glorify it again. And it wasn't a voice for Jesus. Jesus knows God, knew his actions, knew what he wanted. Once again, it was for us. It was provision for us so that we would know, so that we would understand, so that we could see. That the Lord was speaking and taking care of Jesus. Now is the judgment of the world. The world was going to be judged. And at the present time, it was not being and doing well because it didn't treat Jesus well. And if you look at how it treated him at the cross, the cross judged the world. And it defeated Satan. But we didn't treat Jesus well when here, when we, he was here. And the world is all of that that was in opposition to Jesus. You opposed to him. We opposed him. And we were following the other so-called leader of the world. That Satan, that devil. We were following him. We were going with the adversary. We were finding it so hard to believe how good Jesus was. But don't worry, because he said, now the ruler of this world will be cast out. Now, not at the end of time, but right then and there, when Jesus was going to the cross, when he was on the cross, Satan was cast out. Death, where is thy sting? I will open the seals. He go open the seals. He is the mediator. He gave salvation. He gave eternal glory. He left the Holy Spirit. He led by example. So the one that's going to fight him, the one that fought him, and is going to beat him and defeat him, he already defeated him. And he says, if I am lifted up from the earth, It was meaning praise, exhilaration, glory, being raised in great esteem and honor, reverence. And he promised that when he was lifted up, he'll draw all people to him. You got to want to go to him, but it's available. The suffering at the cross, the blood at the cross, the blood that sealed the new will, the new testament, the new covenant. It was to draw people. And it was to draw all people. Not a denomination, not a race, not a color. Any of those things that man has set up to separate, they are not of God. So he was drawing everybody up to him. And then he just says simply, if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. 
It was a, it was honorable. It was a reverence. Then the crowd spoke up. We have heard from the law that the Messiah will remain forever. So how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? Uh-oh. Who? Wow. The people have been taught only bits of the law. And they weren't aware of everything about it. So it made them think of things like that. Was Jesus the Son of Man, the Messiah? Was he really the Messiah? He was showing them. The Son of Man, the Son of Man was just another term for Messiah. But it didn't give you a true meaning, but it was just another word for Messiah. And a little while longer, the light is with you. While you have the light, believe in the light. That's Jesus telling them. He would be there only for a little bit while longer. But while I'm here, believe in the light because you can see it. But when, you, when I leave, you're going to have to work on your faith. So Jesus is talking about his death again. And he, he's telling them how it's going to be. Amen.